Hey everybody, you're listening to the Fake Book Club Podcast, where we talk about everything from movies, music, life, and occasionally the books we're reading. Follow us wherever you find your podcasts. Hope you enjoy the show. Uh, I'm Chris, and I'm here today with... Uh, Tessa. Tabrisha. Oh. Or Whitney. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Evelyn. <laughs> Uh, and as you can tell, this is going to be a very uh, special podcast episode where we're going to be talking about Halloween uh, and other spooky season topics. Um, so before we get started, uh, I want to mention that we are not affiliated nor sponsored by any brands or labels we may talk about during this recording yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a Halloween special. So getting right to it, what is everybody's level of horror and spookiness? <laughs> me personally i do like uh supernatural and gothic horror uh that's usually my comfort zone although i'm good with slasher films I, if it's like a if it's a slasher film with like a culprit hidden by behind a mask and the goal is to try to figure out who the killer is that i like it but if it's like oh we already know who the killer is but and they're just terrorizing everyone, then that just and that annoys me. There's no appeal to it. So that I, that's the type of slasher films I don't like. Oh. <laughs> no, I get the appeal of a slasher film because like I'm uh I'm I think I'm the one here who's like the um uh what it goes. I call myself like decaf horror or spooky light because I'm the one who doesn't like horror or like scary things. I, I cannot stand for example, like Asian supernatural horror. Oh, like the ring. And... Yeah, we. Oh my God, my, my, I have I have had nightmares, <laughs> like from those things. So like my level of horror is like very like I like a spooky vibe. You know, I'm a pumpkin spice girly, right. <laughs> but like I no, I cannot do uh, this. A, a slasher is the highest I will go. Mm. Like. That's that, that's as far as I go, and I feel like that's low on low ish on the tier of horror because there's somebody you gotta be afraid of, and that's not and it's not like supernatural or like unnatural. I mean, the slasher can be pretty scary. I don't know what slashes you're talking about. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> like you're saying it's this... like there's a lot of, there could be a lot of gore, there can be a lot of blood, there can be a lot of like I that kind stand, of horror. I can stand blood. I cannot um like. If you're if, if we're going from Scream to like Halloween, Scream is my tier. Yeah, because I would argue Halloween is a slasher. Yeah, Halloween is a slasher. Straight up a slasher. I feel it like is. Halloween isn't as scary. I feel like Scream is worse than Halloween. Oh exactly. no! Be- uh, I'm the opposite. There's yeah. no way. because you already Jason though. What's that? Friday the Thirteenth. I think Friday the Thirteenth is kind of which outdated. one. Which one is the one that's Jason from the lake? Friday the Thirteenth. Friday the Thirteenth. Okay, okay, okay. And then there's Flash Elm Street. I don't, fu- I don't fuck with no. Elm. No, I, don't I love Nightmare no. on Elm Street. Though. Freddy it's Freddy. So Those good. are comedies. Are my heart? Yeah, no, they are what? exactly. No, not, like Evelyn not, said, they're comedies. They're what? camp comedy. Yeah, no, no, no earlier Any... one, sure, but the ones now, like, nah, this, mm, like, no. yeah, I don't fuck with Chucky and I don't fuck with Freddy Krueger. No, no, oh, 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 Chucky is high camp. No, okay, no, Chucky's comedy. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It is yes, a it is. doll. <laughs> this is I keep reiterating yeah. to people. It is a doll coming to life and wanting to kill people. That's How comedy. is that funny? <laughs> That's, That's the definition of comedy. Because <laughs> it, the comedy comes from the fact that he is a doll with it, like, who, who was doll. cursing. He's cursing up the door. He's, he's, he's using oversized oh weapons. <laughs> I could not look at my toys because, first of all, this is when like TV guides were a thing. Um, before like digital guides, like I saw the movie like showing on Pix Eleven or something saying Child's Play. First of all, the title is misleading. <laughs> So I watched this movie, and I'm seeing. Where were your parents, Teresa? Yeah, they were like not parents. paying attention. An excellent point. An excellent point. <laughs> they were not paying attention until I started screaming. So <laughs> I was like, "Why is there a doll coming down the stairs and killing people?" And no, this it was just so misleading. I could not look at my toys after a while. 
My cousin had a replica Chucky doll because they loved the movie as well. I can't, to this day, really watch Toy Story because it is toys coming to life. Oh, that's it, it does, No, it is creepy. <laughs> to be fair, creepy. to be fair, I my brother absolutely hates The Nightmare Before Christmas because he finds them so, like, creepy and, like, the way they move and, are, and articulate. Claymation. He just hates them completely. It has a creepy vibe. I know, well, yeah, but I'm just like... The, the... The sack of worms, dude. I yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. The Nightmare Before Christmas as a work of art because I think it was like very unique and different at the time, and because it was done by Tim Burton, right? Yeah, it's Tim Burton. Uh, yeah, one of his earlier animations. I, yeah, and it was like an animation you never really seen. Like, it is creepy. Um, but... it's it's not uh what do you call this the nightmare before christmas was created by tim burton but was directed by henry selick he also right. did he also did Coraline. Coraline, mm. love Coraline. yes Coraline was creepy also creepy so animation good. uh creepy it was so uh, animation. I no love, i love it i love both movies yeah. like, yes. I, 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 my yeah. recommendations are gonna be leaning on that side like spooky vibes but yeah. but like ultimately fun and or and or like leaning in the mystery side because that's like that's where my taste lies like right. i'm yeah yeah, you, you but, know what, Sabrina? Do not go to Jackson Heights because I was there a few days ago and I saw not one but two Chucky animatronics trying to sell you cell phones. And I, stuff. Yeah, no, I live I in a little time. Wait, where were you not want my money? I gotta tell you the streets. I'm gonna find it. I'm it's gonna like, find it's it. I didn't be want like to take 80 a picture. Something street. Yeah, yeah it's it's it was around us, the 80s. Yeah. Something. Not that. one but two of them as I was going down That's the thing. And kids great. were playing with it. Oh. Kids were playing with it. They love it. Uh, yeah, well, they don't know better. <laughs> no, but uh, the other day, Tessa and I were in, what, 23rd Street, right? Yes, 23rd Street. We were down in the random, city. Yeah, a random store had, like, one of the giant 12-foot-tall Jack Skellingtons uh, oh, at their door. <laughs> like, just... I have a picture. <laughs> Unfortunately, that Jack Skellington is no longer there. Last time I passed by 23rd Street, it was no longer there. Oh, that's Aww. so sad. It's yeah, so really cool. sad. I wanted to give it a high five. Oh, <laughs> from, from me five foot Jack all the way up twelve feet high with his with his arm out yep. like nope. We do um, have pictures. But I feel like with with like the Nightmare of Elm Street, that's like the one series by Wes one of the few series by Wes Craven, rest in peace. Um, that he oh. really I I don't really watch. I think it's like his my favorite one that he did was Scream. That was like. The best thing he did he just did so well with that um that franchise and i don't know what's going to be happening with all the hoopla and drama behind it but it it really like the the previous movie they did so well of keeping you to his memory and his legacy it just like it, it was just something that was like very unique and different for me especially because it kind of like get me into the murder mystery genre yes it was scary because they had like those jump shots um that happened but it it, yeah. it was also trying to figure out yeah jump scares thank you that um it it, it, ha it gave me enjoyment because i was trying to figure out who the culprit is and like see the little clues that were here and there compared to like halloween i'm like i already know who it is it's mike myers so why well, am i watching this movie for so two horror hours comes from the suspense really for mike myers and also the fact that like you shoot him, he goes down, and then the next shot he's gone. Yeah, and then he or like you're down, running, he and he's just at a leisurely pace and still manages to catch up. Yes, the <laughs> ultimate predator is just walking behind you at like two miles per hour. He's just and you're like... running it, and then all or when you like when you're running and you think the killer is behind you, and then all of a sudden you turn around, and you bump into them. That shit's is crazy every time like how'd you fuck up that badly <laughs> right you went around in the circle without noticing mm -hmm. no. what about I'm... everyone else yeah like... what about i mean we went on a tangent but as we are everyone too. else <laughs> zombies for me i i but it's funny because i can't watch them in like a theater like I would watch a zombie film through my eyes like <laughs> because I 
I think it's um there's like a cool theory that it's like certain genres of horror come out in a response to like some oh. like crazy yeah uh, like event uh, that's happened and it's always like this is biological true. like it reflects like, whatever's going on in the world like if you yeah. have zombies out it's because of whatever if Z you have slashers out it's because of this scare yeah yeah. Been... yeah it's like uh what was it is is zombies like xenophobia or something like that i or... think so I or, no, like, no 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 oh i think it's aliens. like counter -cult. aliens aliens yes you're right xenophobia is like it is alien. aliens aliens yeah. yeah or so, immigration yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, but it is very, it is so, so true. Like, it's topical. It can be topical. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys heard about this year's uh, running uh, theme, I guess, in some horror movies. It was like the crazy pregnancies. <gasps> Have you seen oh, that no. going? Well, it I gives away some things in some of the movies, like Alien Romulus had a pretty creepy pregnancy. And in the most recent Beetlejuice, they had something oh, going on there. So yeah, it was spoilers. a theme. In the, and in some of the, like the first Omen as well, like there was like some creepy ass things going on. It's like, Yo. yeah, this is coming up. Yeah, and the Paramount only... Plus is having like, I don't know if it's like a prequel or a sequel to Rosemary's Baby. I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see that. I yeah. wanted to see that. Like, so are kids evil? Like, you're, are kids evil or bad? Like. Children no, I think born. it's about kids are just I think kids. Wanted, I, think kids are I mean probably kids like a woman's are... agency, I think is what is at yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right Rosemary's now, baby, that's yeah. yeah. Coming up, yeah, yeah, in general. But like no, creepy creepy kids are also a staple of oh, the horror genre. I don't fuck with creepy kids. No, hell no. Cre and creepy kids hell and me. kids dying are two like tropes in films that I do <laughs> not I know. No, the the creepy kids is what gets me. Like, here's the thing. Up until, you know, maybe I hit my 20s or so, I was absolutely afraid of cat. Like I could not watch horror films for anything. And then suddenly I got a little bit better at it. I still will not watch them in the dark after 12, but... <laughs> <laughs> nope. Full, full daylight. Yep, full <laughs> daylight, and I have to be able to watch a comedy afterwards. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's no, great. This is, this is a story... <laughs> This is a story I've told, like, in relation to that. Like, uh, one Valentine's Day, like, my, my group of, like, friends and I were single. So we were all, so we all kind of banded together and said, let's go to someone's house and let's watch a scary movie. Um, I knew I was going to come in there with, like, my eyes closed the entire time. But after we watched the Amityville Horror, they were just, everyone decided, let's, let's, let's put a, a romantic comedy on. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> and, um, we put on 10 things I hate about you afterwards, <laughs> which honestly, like now I do not have, uh, bad memories of Amityville Horror. <laughs> I went to the house. The oh, Amityville you know, house. Right? Yeah. On uh, Long Island, my friend and I were driving around and she was like, Hey, we're not far from Amityville. Do you want to see the house? I was like, hell yeah. Like, we hell yeah. <laughs> Someone is living there. And the problem was he oh, was no. out in the front with a dog. And it's like they kind of did. They He was giving the evil eye because, you know, people come to the house to try yeah. to look at it. And we were like, oh, no, let's go. Let's go. Well, that's <laughs> your fault for buying a famous, an infamous house. Not even. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? No, you know what, though? That's still probably not as bad as like the house from Breaking Bad that like constantly had pizzas being thrown onto the roof because of that. Oh, routine. no, the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Apparently that was a thing for a while. And I was like, that's got to suck. Totally. Oh my it god. Must. You know so, wait, just going back to the zombies really quick. Yeah. Resident Evil. How do you feel about that? I like the first one. Okay. And because I think the first one is like wait, a the video true game zombie, oh, yeah. but the rest of it is just weird. I don't know, like I don't get the, like, she's a clone of the daughter that was sick. Yeah, it. I'm just asking because I'm like, to me, zombie movies fall into so various different ranges. Yeah. So it's like Resident Evil, because it was also the video game, was one of the ones that I saw because I had played the video game. And it was like, the, movie, the first movie was the best of the series yeah uh, I, although i have heard that uh extinction was actually pretty good but i didn't see it didn't at some see it. point 
<laughs> the later films take on like a matrixy vibe. Yeah, because they'd start dealing with clones and people showing back up from the dead and yeah. I don't know, what's go- and what's the conspiracy like the style. here? Like everyone yeah. is dressed like Oh, just Trinity all black. And Neo. <laughs> like, it's, so, it's so weird to hear like this is the story of Resident Evil the movies because I've only heard of Resident Evil the games and it's like it, it is very different. Well, the games are just weird on their own, so. Yeah. AKA Biohazard. Uh, yep, exactly. Yeah. It's funny because it's called it is called Biohazard in Japan and like for the most recent or, or one of one of the more recent titles, I think they were like Resident Evil Biohazard, and then the other one is like Biohazard Resident Evil. Yep. <laughs> I I liked Raccoon City though. Okay. Because I what well, that was like the last one. I is I can't remember if it's a prequel or not. I believe it's the prequel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I did like I did like Raccoon City. Um, I felt like that was more of a traditional zombie film yeah yeah. um but i really like kind of like counter to tessa's point i really love how asians do zombie mm. i understand this i've train- actually never seen an asian zombie film train to busan oh train to busan rampant what was the there was like a korean zombie show on netflix that deserves a whole freaking first season but we're never getting one because that's no. trash but they and then they have another one called um it's in my recommendations list but mm. uh hashtag alive which was amazing and that that's a more modern tale where it's like uh this guy who's like uh for lack of better phrasing and for all you like korea boos or weeaboos out there he's a neat, <laughs> he's a neat and mm. um not current not currently employed in education or training or whatever yeah and 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 NEET, he's yeah. a bum basically and <laughs> he's a bum and he gets essentially trapped in his apartment while um the zombie apocalypse starts and he ends up meeting this girl from an apartment across the way or it's like on a floor below him in his apartment and so they just try to survive together and it has two of my favorite korean actors in it um uin who's about to go to jail for a year and then and then uh park shinye like please tell me it's tax evasion (laughs) no it's so uin and then we can get back to the topic at hand but you are in one of the greatest korean actors of the current generation in my opinion but he was he has depression like he was diagnosed with being bipolar on top of the fact that he allegedly is not straight (laughs) in you know in korea and so he was medicating self-medicating and then they he had prescription for for like depression and um depression and his bipolar or bpd or whatever he had or has he still has it but then he was also like doing other things and you know korea doesn't play about drugs you can get a slap on the wrist for being a rapist but <laughs> You will go to jail if you're on drugs. Dang. Oh my was, god! Was he targeted because he was famous? Uh, I think so. It was kind of, and it was also kind of like a Michael Jackson situation in that his he had a doctor who was just prescribing him drugs, oh. With, oh. like, and That's so he was found with like ketamine, weed, like a bunch of coke, like a bunch of other like those par- were not prescribed. <laughs> Right, on top of, like, his drugs anyway. Because a lot of drugs that are, um, a lot of drugs that are okay here, okay here to use, like, being prescribed is not the case over in Korea. So, like, it was a situation with, like, Park Bomb from 21, where she was trying to bring her ADHD medication over here and almost got put in jail, but point blank bottom line is that he was sentenced to a year in prison (laughs) and for being mentally ill basically (laughs) and terrible 
and it's just a huge loss in his talent because he's fantastic. If you, there is another show that he was in, Hellbound. If anyone watched, uh, it's on it's on Netflix too, and that was a, and that was a manhwa that they turned into a show. Yeah, I was about to ask: is either a manga or a manhwa? Because I have yeah. heard of the title. But yeah, he he's been in like a bunch of stuff. I think if he ever came to to the US, he'd be winning so many fucking awards. But um anyway, back to the zombie genre. I love it. I don't like to I don't like things jumping out at me and yet <laughs> I and only yet. love I only love the 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 zombie genre, the zombie genre. That's something I will always like try and search for. But I don't. I other than like the original from like way back in the day. I don't really like any of the Dawn of the Dead's or Day of the Dead movies. I'm just. Eh. I feel like the first one had such amazing social commentary, and then like the rest of them were just like feel like money grabs if that makes sense yeah like horror for the sake of horror yeah like, horror yeah. for the sake of horror but and i'll talk and one more thing and then i'll toss it over to evelyn but there's a it's not horror right but it is gory and it for the past for the past like 20 some odd years of my life it has haunted me and i will never watch it there's this robocop one i think it's like the second one and it's gross and gory for the time period in which it was made. But there is a scene where Robocop is um, chasing a bad guy. And this and the bad guy in a car, um, he ends up driving into a vat of acid. And he's like getting out of his car and everything is melting off of him. And that... To this day, I saw it once, and to this day, it has haunted me, and I cannot watch it again. <laughs> I remember that scene. I remember watching it with my cousins, we were, and I was like, "What the hell just happened?" Exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh," but RoboCop, I think, is also like I think like sci. I considered the at least the first Terminator to be a little bit of a horror, and and I do like that genre as well. See, but I think that goes back to like the uh, the slasher films, where it's like this undefeatable, unknown, you know, thing walking behind you at like two miles per hour, <laughs> and not being able to put down. Except he can also ride a motorcycle now with a shotgun. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like, but then it also plays into. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's more like a chase rather than. Yeah. Oh, like an action film? Yeah, more like a ch cat and mouse type um, deal versus... Well, the first Terminator, certainly. Oh, f f for sure a horror movie. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's and, and that, if that's the... Movie. Yeah, by that definition, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I have not watched Terminator, but I've heard people talk about the first Terminator in this exact language. Like, that's it was so much closer to a horror, like, suspense type thing than it, the way it is in later... Like, uh later um iterations, like, iterations. Yeah. yeah that the that's the same with the yeah the second one is like very action but that's like the same with the alien franchise too first one's straight up exactly horror, second one's full on action same same i think a part of that has to do with jaws being like that uh one of like the best like uh suspense action movies that had come out blockbusters that had ever come out at that time where it's like oh we don't actually need to show the thing that's killing everybody. Like, the thing. You don't oh, see yeah, the thing. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, the unknown, okay. yeah, no. The unknown is really what's causing that suspense, that horror. You don't know what's going to attack you from behind the corner. It doesn't have to be a jump scare. It just needs to be POV from the camera just zooming into the uh, actor's face. And suddenly, that's how you make a horror movie back then. Yeah, I like find the Final Destination franchise because it's it's death that's yeah. coming after them, and literally like, death. Yeah, and it's just like this entity. Some I think like in the first film, you kind of see a black shadow in the kettle, but then uh, from the other films, it's just usually the wind or just an ominous suspense. Like 
that death is coming after them. So, um, yeah. Yeah. The, the first one made me afraid to get in my, t- my grandmother's tub. <laughs> like, because, because how the guy died because he tripped in the tub. My grandmother has a similar tub <laughs> and knocked it out. And like, and then he cho- I was like, oh no. The third one, I rethought of going on roller coasters because I was like, okay, wait, 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 no, no. This ha- because a lot of, because um, I was, they were just showing Final Destination 3 on AMC a couple of days ago. And when I looked up about the franchise, and I think some people were asking them, like, how did you come up with these, like, accidents and death scenes? They're like, uh, uh, the creator's like, these things have actually happened. We just take them for real life and put them in the film. I was freaked out. I was like, what? <laughs> like... Yeah, um, that's how nine one one is like the yeah. TV show. Now I'm just like, like all these free straight from the headlines. There's a, actually like a board game now, which is I think called either dumb, like either dumb ways oh, to dumb die ways or to die. the worst ways to die, and it's basically like you have to guess if like the situation on the card is a real death, and like and it's all ridiculous situations or something like that. Like it's it's a it's a it's a really funny game. Funny or gruesome? Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, wait a minute. That yes. way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, we have... Actually, Tabrija, you mentioned uh, gothic and psychological, so... Yeah. I guess because that's what the type of books I love reading. Um, so I like seeing that in movies. So if I like... I like psychological and gothic movies can kind of like it's like that ominous feeling but also I feel like the human mind is the scariest thing of all because we still don't know what how the mind thinks how it can morph, <laughs> but like change and a psyche so when I think of horror I also love thinking like psychological a thriller that kind of just suspenseful feeling. So like for psychological, get out, love get out. Um, us, nope. Gone Girl, even though that they changed like the ending, Gone Girl, psychological thriller, because great that one movie. Was crazy. Yeah, a great movie. <laughs> great movie. Crazy. <laughs> you know what you need? Movie. You know what you need? Uh Perfect Blue by Satoshi Kon. Like, if you like psychological, and if you ever enjoyed Black Swan, watch Perfect Blue. Because that's, like, I, I feel like it's the, the the best way to enjoy that specific, like, uh, descent into madness. You said Black Swan, and I was sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was sure. such a good movie. Black Swan so was an good. excellent movie. And um, like while uh, I I had heard afterwards that like there's a lot of elements of uh the movie Perfect Blue in it, and if you've watched any of Satoshi Kon's works, like it's trippy. Like Paprika was the apparently the inspiration for Inception. Mm-hmm. So like in much the same way, Perfect Blue was an inspiration for um for Black Swan, and I think um the way that the both of those are animated is so good. Oh, I did not know that. It was like based on it, or they took a loosely, a, lo- loosely based hook inspiration, like whatever Ooh. words you want to use to describe that those particular relationships between those particular movies. Nice. I'm gonna yeah. check that out. Yeah, Please. I do. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, oh. but that's like the kind of uh, that's what the kind of things I like to watch during this time is, and also like with. Um, of course, with TV shows, it's like the mystery detective kind of shows. Yeah. But then there is this TV show called Inside Number Nine, which they do so well. So there's, I forget their names, but there's like two, they're kind of, they're comedians, but they're also um, behind or they were on the TV show of the League of um... Extraordinary Gentlemen. No. 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 It's a Brit. It was like um, I forget. It's like a a, a certain the British. Wait, the League like of Britain, the League, League of, of Gentlemen, straight up gentlemen. 
I think it's a League of Gentlemen, something like that, or Psychoville. Mm. But Never. yeah, yeah, it, it 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 look it up. It is very creepy. So with Inside Number Nine, they take these um, different scenarios. But any scenario that happens, it's always either inside a house, an apartment, a studio, a room, and it's always number nine. Whoa. The room is either number nine, the hotel room is number nine, and they always create this very creepy, thrilling, psychological um, episodes, and you're on the edge of your seat for close to 22 to 30 minutes. You have no idea how it's going to end. It always, I always love watching their episodes, their latest and sadly last season, because it is the ninth season. And they did say oh. that they would end. They, they said, we're ending at number nine. Um, wow. I know it's going to come out on Halloween on BritBox. So if anyone out there has BritBox, you can subscribe to BritBox. Um, it's always a great treat to watch through Halloween. Even one Halloween, they had a live episode. Wow. where they were live tweeting with people because they they made people believe like oh we're having this episode then all of a sudden the lights went out in the studio and then the um, transmission got cut off and you think that wait did something happen did your internet i thought when i watched it i thought my internet went out because mm -hmm. all of a sudden it was just like the color blocks and then they were live tweeting and they were, and they were saying like hey is everyone seeing this like and something but it was actually staged That's they were cool. making believe that there was a ghost haunting the studio and it was causing all this because they built the studio on a haunted uh, burial ground it's always and a haunted burial <laughs> ground <laughs> so it is like an amazing um series i'm it's one of very very innovative and creative and uh, most of their episodes are spooky but they do have some heartwarming um, episodes. I feel like the live one was my, my favorite. They have one with the surprise vampire that was just out of nowhere. Um, and also there was one where they fooled everyone in thinking, oh, this episode is going to be about a bus. But then when they started playing, it was a game show. And people thought it happened again, that they showed the wrong thing. But... It was not until they reached the very end, people realized, wait, we're actually watching the show and then the credits roll. So it was that that's by far my one of my favorite episodes because um, it, they just do such a great job fooling people and also terrifying everyone at the same time. So um, I kind of like those kind of things, like very innovative and suspenseful, but also like it's psychological as well. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, uh, while it will be their ninth season, they are also doing a West End stage play. Yeah, and it's next, next year. year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so... going to London next month. It, I thought it was next month. Then I looked it up, and they're like, no, it's next year. I was like, damn it. <laughs> Sounds like you're going next year, too. <laughs> I mean, probably will, because I want to see it. <laughs> Amazing. All right, and then Evelyn, just you just put all. I just put all. I just put all. You said, what's everyone's level? I said, there's no there's no ceiling here. Like, I will watch, like, the grossest, there's... nastiest, most, I've oh, got everyone, I can't see it. What is it? You know, like, <laughs> what's I'm, the... try I'm chasing something. I'm trying to chase some kind of, like, thing <laughs> there, that there will scare no the hell out of me. You know, there like, are I'm no just... heights nor lows. You will not shoot <laughs> to nor uh, <laughs> nor totally. Ascend. Yeah, yeah. The limit does not exist. Yeah, yeah there you doesn't go. exist. I'm trying to look for the limit. I think that's what it is. But you know, there's so much. This horror it just encompasses so much. Even like everything yeah. that you guys mentioned. Like I've watched it. I've you know, or I have an interest in it. There's no particular one that I will go to. But I will say probably psychological is the one that probably like it does give me that slight. Ooh, this is. A little disturbing and maybe i'm thinking about it hours after or days after the ones that stick with you like that is the one that i tend to gravitate toward but i'll watch it all <laughs> all right well speaking of watching things uh are there any favorite horrors or halloween uh movies that you guys recommend like or that you guys watch uh during the season like for me i do make it a point to watch the rocky horror picture show because i love that movie mm. so so much and I, I don't know if it counts as horror, but 
it definitely I feels think Halloween. It uh, <laughs> it's it's peak Halloween. It's yeah. certainly Halloween yeah. like uh, mm, vibes. Yeah, because like my um. My go to is like very specifically for like Halloween is always like um uh um nightmare before Christmas, obviously. Um uh what it goes Corpse Bride, um uh Coraline we mentioned, but also Clue. I love the I love the Clue movies. Oh yeah, like Tim Curry, more Tim Curry, <laughs> more Tim Curry, <laughs> more Tim Curry. Like t this is Tim Curry season. <laughs> Tim you Curry know, marathon. Wrong. He was also it at one point. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Pennywise. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was Pennywise. He was like Pennywise. in the nineties, right? Yes. Was it the nineties? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I think it was. I want to say early nineties. Early eighties, nineties around that yeah, time. Yeah, I don't remember when that adaptation came out. Yeah. But no, Tim Curry is apparently a master of these. <laughs> <laughs> he was in. He played a serial killer. And a R word, but he played a serial killer in a couple of episodes in an arc of of um criminal minds, and he was pretty like wow. it was pretty intense. Like he was one of the most memorable of the serial killer characters. Nice. I, he, a... What he would do, he was a, he was basically a, a tertiary like family annihilator. Like he would go into the homes, assault the the wives and daughters, kill them in front of the in front of the husband slash dad, and then kill the dad. <laughs> like, God damn, that's depraved. crazy. Yeah, and he was like, uh, like he they dressed him up to be basically like a vagrant, kind of like homeless, unkept. But he had like a minivan to get around or whatever. Hmm. He was doing this across the country. So um, I highly, uh, I want to say it was maybe like season six ish, but we could, I could always look it up and get back to y'all. But yeah, it was one of the most disturbing episodes. And it was an, it had to be like maybe like three, two or three episodes. It was crazy. That's wild. People I say, think... like, you can tell a lot about the person by where they recognize Tim Curry from. So now yes. I'm wondering what this says about the people who recognize him from Criminal Minds. <laughs> <laughs> that they like true crime. Uh... <laughs> Basically. Is Criminal Minds a horror? I feel like it is. They're just so... I think it, it's... It's pretty really It definitely it's goes procedural. into the psychological of it. Yeah. 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 It's like I think it's like psychological and police procedural because it is like uh I think it's the FBI or something like that who's investigating these crimes. So I think it's like a mixture of that. I wouldn't call it horror. It could be very it can certainly be very scary though. Like yeah. the ending. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. All right. Uh, I, I would say Scream. The Scream franchise. I've yes. only seen the first. How, what? <laughs> what, what? Uh, no, you no. have to watch. No, no at least the second one. I don't really. I have how many? Uh, like, how much of my taste has uh, has not told you that I am a baby? <laughs> Here's the thing: I'm not a baby, but I've only seen the first one as well, and I'll tell you why. The first one didn't scare me, <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going to continue. <laughs> so you said why bother? I'm not exactly. It's like this is for me. It was more comedy, camp, teen. Uh, kind of film where I was like, yeah, this doesn't grab me. <laughs> it is. I think he what I, what I think are like what Wes Craven did. He did talk about like you know the genre that he also helped cre like created like the teen slasher films, but he also mm -hmm. created like an intertwining mystery along with it because that's like people because pe people think of like oh it's just another side no it managed to all connect even to the most recent one it still connects to um to even from the beginning so it, it it's it's a good it's a great franchise for those who would you get scared I mean, depending, you probably have seen a lot scarier stuff and you're probably like, this is it, this is nothing, and probably, right. But I highly recommend for the mystery aspect, 
because like when Whitney and I saw the most recent film, like we soon kind of, well, I actually, Whitney figured it out before I did. Cause I, I was like, when you talk about that can't be, that can't be the person. And she was right. Uh, <laughs> and so Cox, she was like, Oh my God. Cause you figure out the clues that are laying behind and what they say. And I think they did that on purpose because they want the audience to go play along and to figure it out. So I think it is more just a slasher film, but it's also like, you know, picking up on the little um, like Easter eggs and trying to figure out the underlying mystery. And then also the psychological aspect of this, all this, this is crazy stuff that all these people had to deal with and it still had lasting effects up to the most recent film. And it is still ongoing. And, and it's something that is being discussed in the film, like the effects of, you know, slasher films, because that was um, a hot topic during the time when Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer came out. Oh like how, God, like, you know, the psychological aspect of it. And Wes Craven kind of made fun of it. And then in the film, he was like, well, you guys are saying that this is my fault. Well, I'm going to put it in the film. And kind of make fun of it a little bit. And you kind of, you, you, you see that a little bit. And then also in the third one, which I really like how it, cause it's something that we even deal with, like how we take real life incidences and we make it into a movie and mm -hmm. not thinking about that these things like with true crime, that these things have happened to real people and we are not seeing the effect of it. So you can have an entire class on the screen franchise. And I think that's, that's why I like say, yes, it may not be scary, but it is a very intriguing mystery and thriller that I, I think it's like one of the things, even though I know what happens in each film, it's still something that I'm always excited about watching. I think because it was self-aware of itself in the first movie, I was kind of like, well, you're crossing like a certain line that I didn't really want all jumbled together you know so it's just like are you horror are you making fun of horror like where you are you and then, at that point meta. I, I hate okay I don't say I hate meta but it will take it takes a very good meta for me to be into and for right. this one it did not work for me I was like no don't do that I don't like I don't go into slasher movies expecting to be scared I go into them expecting a lot of blood and like gut Gore. And like yeah. a shit ton of like blood packs and like neck slices. <laughs> Maybe like your eyeball comes out. Stubber <laughs> hands. Like you're you're, you know, you got you get seppuku'd a little bit, like and your guts fall out. Like mm. that's that's why I'm and that's why I like zombie stuff too, because I'm like, you're literally being eaten alive mm. and like you... So you like warm bodies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've never seen warm bodies because I really? did not like. Huh. I didn't care about the romance story part of it. Like, if I'm gonna watch a zombie movie, it's like we're fighting for our survival here, and not like oh, I have a zombie boyfriend. Now. <laughs> 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 like, I look. I it's small tangent, but I do like. A, like a monster romance i'm 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 intrigued in seeing the new what's her name melissa barrera from the scream franchise and her movie coming out where she falls in love with literal beast from disney but with better makeup <laughs> so better than beastly the cw oh, uh tv yeah. No, we don't talk about Beastly. That 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 was a C. I mean, it was CWS, but it wasn't a CW TV show. It was a was movie. it not? No. no, it was a reboot to the to the what's her face Laurel Hamilton Lauren Hamilton from um from the original Terminator movies Linda she, Hamilton Linda Hamilton. Thank you. She uh, was in a movie with a movie. She was in a TV show called Beast with um Lou Pearlman as the beast You're right. and they rebooted oh. it Beastly is a is with is a movie with Vanessa Hudgens that's what I was thinking he he wasn't a beast he just had 
scars on his face. He was really ugly. Wait, was I thought that was a TV show? Was there a TV show of that? There Beauty might have and been. the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. They re there you they, go. Oh. yeah because they had a TV yeah. show. No, Beastly Girl was a movie. Yeah, I and then I the game was the show. Okay, that was my bad. Yeah, no, it was Beauty and the it, that was on the CW, and that's that what lasted, I was thinking. Yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm dead. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with names, but oh, yeah, I name. <laughs> I don't go into the I don't go into slasher movies expecting to be scared per se. It's just more of these people are gonna die, and it's either gonna be why are you going <laughs> why are you going up the stairs instead of out of the front door versus like um and you versus you know being smart and if you're smart you're gonna die because that's like the trope but then but it all comes down to you know the final girl which is a whole these oh, it's a whole concept of, yeah but i i like more uh i don't have any just to kind of circle back to the topic i don't really have any um Halloween movies that I rewatch, it truly depends on what comes on at the TV and I feel like paying attention to. And nine times out of ten, it's Blade, the first one. Oh, that's yeah. So good. Blood Rave. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I someone on TikTok was like, Blade is the reason why I listened to e dark EDM. And I was just like, shit, me too. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I feel it and it's crazy because you have Blade was like the first my first exposure to like not my mother or parents music <laughs> or like the black radio station that we listened to in Rochester so I was just like there here's like this black guy dressed out in like like that all leather <laughs> all leather like dark dark fantasy futuristic whatever everything that blade is in this like eastern the only black person essentially in this eastern european style club in a meat locker literally <laughs> in or a meat packing plant literally and you're just like this music is fucking awesome and then he fights to this movie and then he fights to this music and then all 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 good things happen because blade exists honestly because we got um, we got Blade, and then now Neo, like, the Matrix kind of added their own computer techno EDM music, and then we got Spider-Man. So all good things happen because of Blade. Okay, I Spider-Man, yes. I'm not entirely sure that the Wachowskis were inspired by Blade's uh, blood rave scene. To Look, make, to make they, took, they took a black woman's story and made it their own so all right that's a different topic <laughs> that is a different topic however <laughs> which the spider -Man? is there toby the first one uh, toby okay without without blade <laughs> we would not have the current mcu yeah because blade was the like kind of really the first successful uh marvel movie I mean, I don't think they would think it. I think they would say Spider-Man. Well, they're never going to give Black people credit, but... No. <laughs> Spider-Man, like, <laughs> like, once Spider-Man came out, that became the most successful one. Oh, no, 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 really no. Wait, no, not Spider-Man. X-Men. Blade was still the first one. Blade was the first one. Yeah, but X-Men really put Marvel on the map. Wait, wait, it was, yeah. The first one was Spider-Man first. No, X-Men was first. Trust me, I remember because I remember watching X Men in elementary school. But and Spider Man in high school. With, had the popularity of Blade, the original Marvel movie. Trust me, I, here's the thing: I wouldn't I, call it a Marvel movie. I don't know. I feel like Marvel... it expanded beyond that. It wasn't the Marvel brand. It was like released no. by Miramax or whatever. Like. Exactly. Right. And that was, yeah. And that, it's still a super. All things lead back to Blade. We still would not have <laughs> no, I agree with have without Blade. Because look, now they're giving him his flowers, deservedly, in Deadpool and Wolverine. Yep, and there will only ever be one. There will only ever be one. Because <laughs> some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> <laughs>
the absolute best line oh that was so good that line is one of the best lines in that film <laughs> i have to go and watch it i have so not yet seen it you're not the first one but it's it's very if you yeah. liked if you like the third uh spider-man homecoming the uh, is it homecoming so oh, I, have a, I have a, I have a diversity home. of Spider-Man. Spider-Man is not my no favorite. Way no Way Home is the third. Superhero. Talking about like the, the multiversal yeah. all Spider-Man showing up. That's No Way Home, yeah. No Way Home. Yeah, no so if home. you liked No Way Home, you would no. like Deadpool versus Wolverine. Well, I love. I still love Deadpool. I've seen one and two. I just haven't seen three. You I love should, Deadpool. You should see Absolutely see the third one. Yeah, I want to see the Um, I don't like Spider-Man. I'm not as a character, I think he's annoying a little bit. Um, yeah, that's what my dad says too. So <laughs> yeah, I agree there. I agree. I there. like my. I love the uh, Miles Morales ones. Oh, uh, like, the animated, the uh, Across the Spider Verse. As you yeah. sure you have True. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, quick tangent. So I've just finally been giving given access at my new job to do Yay. my job, Yay. but this entire time. I've just been reading so many comics, and I just finished uh, one of the Miles Morales runs, the the Ultimate Spider-Man runs, like, from way back in the day. It is honestly so hilarious to see how his character has kept, like, growing, at, like, uh, as, you know, more writers write him, as different writers write him, as he gets more exposure. And yet, his problems are so vastly different from Peter Parker's. But they still have that same, like, Spider-Man luck where it's like nothing will ever go right for them. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it is ab- no. In- this says a lot about you as a person, listen by you. the way. <laughs> no, no, listen. They're in not the meant first- to have it all. I know. They can't. They absolutely, like, uh, in that first Ultimate run, after saving the city, the world, whatever, you know, journeying with Captain America and Thor... Miles goes back to uh, Brooklyn, does his thing, is dating that version's Kate Bishop, only to find out that she's a Hydra agent. I'm like, this man oh, cannot nice. catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's amazing. And I think it's being his Spider-Man. Mom, I hmm? mean, I think his mom dies too. Yeah, his mom dies in that run. His dad runs away, uh, like abandons him. Uh, he And then, yeah, he finds out that his... Uh, one, he finds out that his gr- ex, by that point, is a Hydra agent. And two, his dad used to be in S.H.I.E.L.D. So when he found out that he was Spider-Man, he was just like, nope, can't do this shit, I'm out. <laughs> and then when he comes back, he's like, uh, look, a lot of shit happened and I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it was it was wild. But yeah, comics. <laughs> um, speaking of comics, I have one other movie that I forgot would be The Crow. The original crow. Ooh, that is it. absolutely what. Yes, may he rest in peace. <laughs> that is absolutely one of my favorite. Uh, I didn't know it was a comic book movie until much later, but it is one of my favorites, and I watched it when I was like five. Did you have? Hmm. No, of course not. That? <laughs> Absolutely not. I should not have watched that. Did, <laughs> did you do a lot of things about you, Chris? Did you think it was about birds? Like I thought it was. About- <laughs> <laughs> no. So here's the here's the fun uh, thing about my family is that one, I uh, when I was younger, I was raised uh, like I was constantly picked up after school by my aunt. So I was uh, with my three cousins, all girls, all into horror. So I wa- I watched a lot of horror films with them. However, on the other side, uh, I would spend time with my other aunt and uncle and my other cousin. And they didn't really restrict what my cousin was watching. So, like, he was watching South Park. He's a year younger than I am. He was watching South Park. Uh, he was watching, like, violent, uh, like, action movies uh, that we should not have been watching at, like, you know six seven years old and so at one point they put on the crow for us to watch and i was very young (laughs) and it was great (laughs) and they did a remake didn't they yeah it it was not no no they did no 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 it doesn't exist it it really shouldn't 
<laughs> they no, they didn't make a remake. They made several sequels, however, <laughs> some of which were okay, and a TV show. I think they, I think they yeah. had a TV show for a while. Yeah, I think it was animated or something. Uh, like that. No, they had a, a live action one too. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, The Crow is a wild series to get into, especially like when you read about how the author came up with it. Yeah, it was like um in memory of his fiance yeah he was like that he was channeling his grief mm -hmm. and yeah. one of the uh like first meet like kind of like to what whitney said about the blood rave scene this was one of the first films that exposed me to like edm and techno music and goth music like, it was that time the 90s it, early the 90s, 90s. Yeah, yeah the 90s straight up i am ashamed to say i Really thought it was about birds. I, That's I was, fair. <laughs> there is a bird in the film, <laughs> and there are several in Alfred Hitchcock's. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Which it took me a while to realize it was based off the short story by Daphne Du Maurier. So yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know it was, um, that the birds was based off of a short story. Oh, I didn't know that. The birds yeah. was based off a short story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And Daphne du Maurier like is extremely good at like these gothic um like she really like is. like novels. Like Rebecca is one of her most well known ones. And that's yeah. like really oh, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, I read that one. Yeah. I need yeah. I actually personally need to read it because this is like I know a lot about it because I've listened to like a bunch of media about it and also like, you know read the summaries that are like i was doing it for research and like i really need to get my hands on a copy of it and for some bizarre reason like whenever i try to order it off amazon like there's never like a good copy and mm -hmm. um it was it was only when i went to barnes and noble that i saw like oh they made like a this big reissue of it and i'm just here like oh that's why like i don't know what's going on with this book but I'm guessing it sells very, very well. Mm -hmm. And there's also the movie, the movie that uh, it was the black and white one. one. Yeah, I have heard that. So good. The Netflix one. I don't know why they decided to do that. I don't know it exists. <laughs> I didn't know it exists either. Wait, you know, it is it like it a doesn't. remake, or did they just <laughs> colorize it? It's colorized in a remake. Oh. oh. And oh. also has Army Hammer. In it. Oh. Nah. Mm. Double blow. Double blow. Yeah. So, That's rough, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like uh, any other uh recommendations, uh, Evelyn Whitney for for like uh, yeah, film... for the films for Halloween specifically, right? Halloween, The Blackening to region I saw it three times. The Blackening, which one's this one? I what? Read this. Get the... I'm sorry, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I have heard of this. I've heard it's of it. the best experience you have, <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> funny <laughs> i think that works for halloween like something that's horror and comedy together i think that works for halloween itself like for the holiday wait is this one of the ones that's like in the veins of scary movie yes but, okay uh, but it's not it's not a parody no oh it's like a whole different concept of story it is like a it's a satire but it is an original story it it just made it makes fun I, it makes I, fun of like horror things, but also it makes fun of um, real life and stuff. Like it, it, it and it, I, I want to say it has it, like correct, the correct song. Me. Correct me what? if I'm wrong. Does it poke fun at specifically black horror movie tropes? Yes. Yes. Okay. What What would happen if you put? If oh, oh, there are only black people in a in a slasher film, essentially, remember <laughs> this. I saw trailers for this. That's why. Yeah. The tagline is like the tagline says like yeah. at least one of them has to survive <laughs> because it's usually yeah. the black person. That's so and one of them has to die Brandy first. Brandy was the first final yeah, yeah, there it is. We no, can't all it? die first. There we go. We can't uh, all die. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I that's actually a, love that. That's a good one. Okay. We saw it twice, and oh, it is so good. I gotta and go you know what? It. Actually, I might buy the digital copy so I can watch it again because coming out on like Peacock. I think it's a, coming out on like Peacock or Paramount. Okay. Oh, Paramount. Oh, Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I saw an but, ad for it. That's how I how I know. Amazon like, Prime. <laughs> Come on. Oh no. <laughs> Please, that too. So I was just like, this it's 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 scary. 
not scary in like a uh, kind of like a scary scary way but it's it's a typical sl slasher like a uh, cabin in the woods type yeah film so if you liked get out if you like the like friday the 13th if you like scream it's definitely in that vein but it's funny because again it does poke fun of uh the genre especially because it's all black people Mm -hmm. <laughs> in no honestly the that sounds amazing and once i like looked up the uh the poster for it i was like wait no I have seen the trailer for this, but I did not watch the movie. The trailer doesn't even do it justice. No, because it, it, it was even more funny. Like the stuff, like, like watching it. Yeah, there's like there's a a part where it says, um, because the game asks them, like, oh, name all the black um characters, or, like guest um guest characters on Friends, and they're all saying like, oh, I never watched the show. Oh, but there was that one person who was there. But that was it. Mm. And then another person's like, oh, wait, no, there was another person <laughs> that was on there. And then they were like, wait, so you have watched the show? Like, no, we just. <laughs> like, no, we just know who showed up in Friends it's, for that exactly. one episode. Oh, my God. Like, That's the funniest so part good. is like. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, the but the real answer is like I don't know I don't watch this. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that is absolutely peak comedy from like the two thousands <laughs> made yeah. it into this no, it's, decade. It came out twenty last year, right? Yeah, it came out. Uh, it says twenty twenty two, I think. It says two? Was it last year? No, yeah, twenty twenty two. Oh, okay. So when did we get trapped in Chicago? <laughs> Because that's that's just where we saw it the second time. Would that not have been last <laughs> year? No. Yeah, well, that was last would, year. Maybe they were doing a reshowing of it, but it says 2022 is when it came out. No, I think because it was based on a short film, which came out in 2022. I uh, think the uh, long feature film was in 2023. No. When did when did we go to Chicago? When was Chicago? Last year. No, was last it? year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know because this you year was San Diego, so we didn't go last year yes. to Chicago. I was yes. thinking, yeah. I was thinking, I'm already in 2025 of for anti prom planning. No, I understand so, this. Like, which is June 2025. So I was like, wait. So no, we did not go this year because it wasn't. So it was last year. Yeah. yeah. No, I I know it was last oh, year because no, no. Okay. I I remember Tabrisha brought me back an arc from uh from so, Chicago, so I was like, yes, I, I remember. It, I looked it up. Here's what it is: it premiered at uh T I F F uh the I guess the film one of the film festivals Toronto Film Festival. Thank you. In 2022, and then it was released uh nationwide in 2023. There we yeah. go. So there you go. But either way, that sounds awesome. No, this Hilarious. this actually I, I actually think this film is a hundred percent up your alley. It's a satire, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I think and then what else did I put here? Uh if you want if again back to the I have one more slasher recommendation and one more zombie recommendation. Um so ready or not is one of it's ooh speaking of so t I lied. Slight, slight fabrication on my end. So I have three <laughs> recommendations all together. <laughs> so one is Ready or Not. And it is, um, it's a slasher, but it also has a, a kiss of the occult. <laughs> Why does that sound familiar? It's the one with Samara Weaving, the one who we all thought was Margot Robbie. Uh, no, yes, the, the one where they're all in a big house and they're killing each other because they're playing hide and seek. Oh, like, I saw that. Is that not the cabin? That's not the cabin. No. Ready or not. Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's fantastic. It was I was pleasantly surprised when I like I think I don't think I did I go to the theater to see it? I can't remember <laughs> if I did. But either way, when I did watch it, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a great spin on like the slasher cat and mouse uh genre. Yeah. And again, if you like the occult, um, and of course, it was very bloody and very gross yes. and it very gory. extremely bloody. It was very bloody. Yeah, um, it's, it's a wild movie. I've, okay, I've heard lots of things about this one. 
And therefore, if you liked, if you liked uh, or have watched and liked it, um, ready or not, you will absolutely love Abigail, which came out earlier this year. Oh, and I... it's by the same people. And it stars Melissa Barrera from the Scream movies, right. the, the new uh, era of the Scream movies. She got fired, right? Or she quit. She got fired because she was pro Palestine, but that's yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Jenny Ortega left the series. Mm, solidarity. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm just like, they were fantastic together. And then well, they, you and watch then the Jenny Ortega scrambled. in uh, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and then the studio scrambled to like change their mind. I think she was like, "Fuck you now." Um, but I'm like. There was it was such a good genre. Anyway, so if you watch Abigail, Abigail, I know this is gonna contradict what I said earlier about creepy kids. However, this is my one exception because it's about these got this this ragtag team of thieves um who kidnap an heiress, and the heiress turns out to be a vampire. <laughs> And she kills them. I and was thinking of the wrong movie. <laughs> Were you no, thinking no, 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 Annabelle? I, no, uh, the which doll. One? no, not Annabelle. <laughs> That's no, what I was thinking I was the whole thinking, time you were saying that. I was thinking of um what was the one that uh got released where it's like uh an android? Oh uh, the AI Megan. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of Megan and I was like, wait, Megan was about a heist? <laughs> but I think it's from the same studio. It probably is. It feels yeah. like it is. But you know, I do you know, remember the post for Abigail. It's like creepy, like uh, girl a doll like, face. dress, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh my God. I think, but yeah, if you um liked Ready or Not, or if like that is up your alley, I highly rec recommend Abigail because it's truly, truly fantastic. I went to the theater to go see it because um I because I liked the ready or not and I liked the the creators for that. And then um another recommendation I have in the zombie genre is um well I also like a quiet place but I can go on and on about the quiet place. I, I go like on about the quiet place. I love the quiet I loved place. it. I like yeah. I like monster films like that too. Um and it was just a nice spin. Even like the whole series to me is fit. It's great yes. storytelling. Even though I, the rumors are John Krasinski is kind of a weirdo, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from too. And I was hearing about that. I was like, wait a minute, no, right? No. Kind of a jerk, but I know a white man in Hollywood being a jerk. I'm shocked. <laughs> but um, I like Lupe I like the last one that came out. Um, it, it yeah, is a that's a prequel, right? Yeah, like day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as as if they keep making, if they keep making them, I will keep watching them. Okay. Um, oh gosh, she's she's so good in it. Oh, she's Lupita. fantastic, bittersweet. Lupita. But if you like Lupita in horror, in the horror genre, I and you liked her in Quiet Place Day One, you should watch um, Little Monsters. Where oh. she is a camp counselor during uh, a summer camp counselor during a zombie outbreak with children, <laughs> and the children are fine, but like everyone around them is becoming a zombie. <laughs> oh, that's funny! And so you know, she's like, so she has to be, you know, basically Miss Rachel, um, for anyone who listens that has children and know who Miss Rachel is. Um you have to she has to be Miss Rachel to all these scared little kids but also fighting all of these zombies. That actually sounds awesome though. Yeah, fantastic... I have not heard of it. It's a fantastic movie. I it's one of my favorite um in the zombie genres. It's on Hulu, like, is it? I don't know. I can't remember I, I watched it. I just... <laughs> but yeah. I think if you, and it's not super scary because I feel like they can't go too crazy when you have children. Hell, <laughs> so, that to the omen. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
The only uh, zombie movie I will watch is Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead is good. Comedy. Shaun of the Classic. Dead ignited my love for Queen, but again, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Shaun of the Dead, uh, it's like uh, Ed- Egg, Nick Frost. They're oh. just. I'm like, I, you know what? I prefer Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is my favorite. Yes. Hot Fuzz is my favorite. Shaun of the Dead. Hot, Hot Fuzz, Fuzz is my favorite aspect. Edgar Wright joint. Yes, because you don't expect it to be, like, I think, like, in the middle point, it just really turns ominous and suspenseful, and you never expect it to be. It's so, it, Yeah, exactly. So I think they did. Yeah. That was amazing. Hot Fuzz was really good. The, world, is the world's end was okay. It's okay. Yeah. Hot like Fuzz. The world's, end. the world's end. I know. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, and I love you. But... <laughs> Hot Fuzz is my perfect movie. Like it has yeah. everything I enjoy, everything I want, and si- uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, like, bruh, being the best, being, being the best, the absolute best. Like it's, yeah. No, I was introduced to Hot Fuzz like by an unfortunate group of people, but now I, I, I now it's just like one of my favorite movies. Like, I'm glad it wasn't tainted for you. Hmm. I'm glad it wasn't tainted for you by the horrible people. I refuse to like. I refuse to let uh, like w- like that particular movie be tainted by whoever introduced it to me. Like <laughs> that th- that's my movie now. <laughs> All right. I mean, Anybody I, else? I'm sure we can post uh, at some point our recommendation list, like the full list. Yeah, but is yeah, there anything else anybody wants to talk about now or? But. I will toss it over to Evelyn. I feel like I've been dominating this conversation. Sorry. What is the topic now? I mean, you can either talk about the movies or you could go to book recommendations if you want. Oh, okay. Like movies in general. I think I already spoke about the Halloween stuff anyway, but uh, horror. I I think Rosemary's Baby is one of my favorite, if not the favorite, because it is that scary. I think it's the only one that made me like, oh God, like, Okay. Days later, nights later, thinking about it because it's just, it's just like if you haven't seen it, you know, it's the twist about like, oh, is it all in her mind or is it actually happening to her? And so I think that's kind of like the draw there. It's like psychological, but then it's like also like seeing, you know, so it's like it's got a bit of both. And I like that a lot. And plus, you know, it's Mia Farrow. Gosh, she's so good in it. So and yeah, yeah just the whole movie in general. I really like that. But if we're talking about, well, I, I guess movie wise and then book wise I will tell you why The Shining really works as a movie it's I, I think it's a great horror it's a classic like even if you don't like horror I think it's just like like stylistically you, you gotta watch this but I am reading the book The Shining and it's okay it's <laughs> not scary and then I was thinking like you know what I don't think I've ever read a scary book like I'm reading it like oh my god I, I can't read this anymore this is scaring the hell out of me I think more about The Shining is that it's more about like family dynamics and abuse and things like alcoholism. So it's not, which is its own kind of horror in a way, but it's not the type of horror that The Shining, the movie shows. And I think they had beef. I feel like Stephen King had beef with the director about how he took that movie. And so, uh, (laughs) yeah, Stephen King famously hates The Shining movie, tried to make his own, which was way worse. Get out! I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently it... his version was just banned. <laughs> oh, wow. they totally diverge. Like reading it and then seeing the movie, they're totally different things. It's so funny to me that uh, they're both The Shining, but they're quite yeah, not. No. But I, yeah, I can... that movie is great. I love that. So movie. good, it's so good. Cases. It's one of the cases where the movie is better than the book. Yes, actually, yeah, I think it is one of the very few. I don't know what else you can say that for. <laughs> <laughs> Very yes. few. Very few, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. but book wise, that's the only one that I was thinking of right now. I don't know if you guys know a scary yeah, book. Few. I was gonna say for like horror books, I don't think it's necessarily about being scared out of your mind so much as like you get the um like the goosebumps. You get like the uh your hair standing on end. Uh it puts you into such a place where 
your like the the lizard brain is activated where it's just like oh oh no it's funny because like i find reading horror much more palatable than watching horror because like i've read a few like uh horror stuff for my job so like it's like and i've been able to tolerate it and i've been able to like enjoy some of it i've discovered like aspects of horror that i enjoy so like yeah no that's that's great Okay. I mean, well, at that point, books. <laughs> no, I agree with Tessa. I can read horror instead compared to like watching horror. So for for books, like with horror books, I it's mostly graphic novels I read. So the top one, anything by Junji Ito, because Hmm. you just want to give him a therapist because it's like, all right, is something wrong? Do you need He's to a talk? very happy person. He He really is. is. And that's the in... creepiest thing. <laughs> he draws excellent cats. He does. He draws, he, his artwork is so amazing. And he draws stuff that scares the living daylights out of you. But when you see him, he's the happiest person you can ever, I'm like, okay, you need a hug or something. I don't know. But you do amazing work. A anything that he has done, you and you want a spooky read for the Halloween season, just pick up any of his books. And then I think like the other um, comic book series is my all-time favorite, Something is Killing the Children. I absolutely love it. It's by James Tinian IV and other illustrator illustrators. It is, I honestly thought it would have ended by... volume four and it's still going on strong he keeps and there's two spinoffs one is the house of slaughter and i think there's going to be another spinoff and there's it's also going to be a netflix series so Wow. Oh, that's cool. i'm interested to see what it that's going to be like but the way netflix has been doing stuff it's been hit or miss but i absolutely love the graphic novel series the the latest volume comes out at the end of this month so For horror like book, that's those are my recommendations. But I tend to like reading mystery and thriller uh books during this time. And I have to like name my all time favorite, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. That she is the queen of mystery for a reason. And with that book, which is the best selling novel um of all time, best selling mystery novel of all time, it she absolutely created a very suspenseful and honest tale that you have no idea what is happening and you're shocked at the very end a lot of authors have copied her try to copy that setting that laughter and thriller style and some have succeeded some have not but it's always great to I... read the original and then also like um the haunting of hill house by Okay. shirley jackson So a lot of people complain about The Haunting of Hill House saying that it's not scary. And I think it is like, it is a, it's a scary book because it is a, it's again, one of those books about how far like your human mind can play tricks on you. And like, and when you're put into an unsettling um, setting and with all her books, with Shirley Jackson's book, she creates that suspenseful and psychological kind of tale. And this one really takes a cake. I kind of prefer uh, we, we Have Always Lived in a Castle, which if you don't like creepy children, don't read that one. I've heard. Uh, <laughs> it has a creepy child. Um, but The Haunting of Hill House, that is her most famous one. And it is a great psychological horror haunting book. And also Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I do need to read that. That's, That's a classic. again, another psychological horror and amazing at the fact that Mary Shelley, one, only wrote it at the age of 18 and wrote it in one night. Queen. So that that really, that, that's like an amazing feat. So The I would say original those are my recommendations. Hmm? I was like the original Scream Queen. No, that's Yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. No, that's Sure. true. That's true. But I mean, her life was just death after death after death. Yeah. It kind of is really sad. But she she was a very talented writer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, from my 
for me, it's definitely uh, like I wrote there, anything from Brahm, which if you haven't heard of Brahm, uh, Gerald Brahm is full name, but he only writes Brahm down as his um, credit credit. Uh, he is also an artist uh, of like, you know, he's done like uh, Magic the Gathering art. He's done Final Fantasy art. He does um, not Final Fantasy uh, Dungeons and Dragons art. He's done full on like uh, sci fi horror art, uh, giant like oil paintings. And then he decided that he also wanted to write books. So the first one that I ever read was The Child Thief from him, which was a reimagining of Peter Pan's uh, story. Um, where according to Brahm, his inspiration was the fact that there's one line in the book where it describes uh, Peter Pan's never-ending war against the adults slash pirates, uh, where he constantly recruits, you know, the Lost Boys, and even if one fell, he will find another to replace him. He took that idea and just made it into a full-on book, which is very terrifying, because there's body horror in it, there's the idea of, like... um being saved by somebody only for them to turn into your abuser as well. Um, and then it flips on the head where it's like the pirates, the adults, they're not actually the villains necessarily, but you're being forced into this war regardless. Cause otherwise you will turn into a monster and die. So it's an entire, you know, thing and he also he writes a lot of like book novels about like um folk like dealing with folklore or like uh stuff that classifies as gothic horror uh he's got krampus which was a christmas time book um dealing with the uh the idea of krampus you know the uh i forgot where he's from nor uh norway no it's it's definitely like nordic. a Scandinavian. he's nordic yes, yeah nordic like a nordic um yeah you know, like he's what happened. He's what happens to the bad children. Instead of getting gifts, he puts them in the sack and beats the crap out of them. Um, but you find out that through all of this novel, there's also a subplot dealing with Santa uh, and also the dead Norse gods. So really weird, really wild. Um, he also has Slewfoot, which is during the uh, like pilgrim times uh where women were considered you know witches if they even so much as spoke out for anything uh except it turns out that she does eventually form a coven with a uh near dead north american spirit uh hence becoming an actual witch uh where she does take revenge on the town that killed her husband so fun times uh, are, and then, are these he, illustrated also, or is they have they like... have illustrations, but they are full. Not like he has uh, in the middle of the novels. There are full uh, prints, full images, like oh, that's oil cool. paintings. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like the actual images are like oil paintings that are like thirty by forty size. Oh, nice. Or like twenty four by thirty size. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're lovely. And then his new one, Evil in Me takes place in the 80s deals with rock and roll and demons and uh it was right up my alley when i was reading that book i read it in a day <laughs> 80s and rock and roll you have me sold <laughs> 80s rock and roll and demons okay. I mean, i'm there yeah uh, yeah uh but yeah besides those uh i am actually rereading um something wicked this way comes by ray bradbury which Ooh. was like a book that got me back into reading when I was in the seventh grade. Uh, great horror novel. I believe they tried to make it into a movie at one point, and I don't think it succeeded. Um, but it it does deal with like a magic carnival that shows up on the e like the week of Christmas of Halloween, uh, and just terrorizes a small town in Maine, or not Maine. Maine is Stephen King. Um, I forgot where this one is. It's like somewhere in the Midwest, I think. But yeah, those are those are some of my favorites when it comes to like uh, horror or gothic uh, literature. Yeah, no, it's actually funny because I can connect like um, some of my like um, Halloween recommends to two things here, because um, 
every October, I try to build myself like a list of like um, Halloween slash um, like a uh, horror adjacent reads. Because I just, you know, I, I like to give myself things to do during, like, uh, during October in the fall. Like, it's fall, like, vibes. Um, one of the, um, with Tabrija talking about And Then There Were None, um, I think one of the um, books that did pull off the format was The Decagon House Murders by um, Yukito Ayatsuji. because because um they're oh, I, the the people in that um novel are very aware of the of the book they're like um they're like a group of like uh members of like a a mystery club and that they go out in onto a deserted island to the decagon house and one by one they're slow they're killed there And it's amazing. And like when I went into that book, it's like it it gives you like oh, one of the best mysteries like from Japan or whatever, and like award winning. And I was like okay cool. And I started reading it, and I was so drawn in. And I'm just like, I'm honestly deeply impressed by that book. It's so good. They made a manga <laughs> out of it. oh, I need to find that. Whoa, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I need to find it. That that book was so good. I could not. I I remember I read it and I couldn't stop talking about it for weeks. <laughs> and um, with Chris just talking about Ray Bradbury, um, I, I read for one of these uh for one of these October lists that I made uh the Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, and that's actually like um I know this. um story because there was an animated special that was made many years ago that used to air on like i think it used to air on cartoon network when i was young um around halloween and it's basically um like a group of friends that like come together during halloween that always go trick-or-treating together but one of their um one of the kids in their group is sick And it turns out like his soul his soul has been taken and like they have to go through the history of Halloween and like what Halloween means to like many generations in order to save their friend. So like it, um the book is a little bit different, but it has the same vibe of like learning about Halloween and like what it represents to many um nations because it goes through, I think, um Uh, Sam Hain, it, it goes through Dia de los Muertos, it goes through like various traditions, which was very, very interesting to me. Yeah, Yeah. Ray Bradbury has been one of my favorite authors for decades <laughs> because he does, he has a great uh, way of telling a narrative, whether it has anything to do with fantasy, science fiction, um, short stories, long form. He is a master of storytelling. Yeah, no, this was a very fun read. It was a very light read also. Like it's a it's a very short book Mm-hmm. as well. But like it it was a good it, I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Also, apparently there's been several adaptations of Something Wicked This Way Comes, including one by Disney, which he considers one of the best adaptations of his works. So now I need to go find that later. Oh. <laughs> yeah, cuz the the cartoon you just mentioned, I cuz I did not remember I didn't remember seeing it on the Cartoon Network until I just saw the cover and the animation, and I do Yes. recall seeing it, he actually wrote the screenplay for it. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that, and that's so good. Yeah. That is so good. I have a very selfish recommendation that I don't know any if, like... I think it's available in the library, if I recall correctly. But um, there's a collection of um, mysteries um, from the Edo period. Uh, and um, this book is called The Curious Casebook of Inspector Hanshichi um, by Okamoto Kido. And it's translated by Ian MacDonald. And it's basically like a bunch um a bunch of mysteries that are being solved in Ed in the Edo period. And it's such a it's such a nice insight to like that particular period in Japan when they were like going through like the restoration era. And like the case there's like cases about like samurai, there's mysteries about like women uh getting like kidnapped in the middle of the night and like Uh, mysterious goings on in like a remote village, you know, and I'm like, 
they're all short and they're all like fun to read and they're always like with the air of like yeah i i screwed this case up when i was young but i'll tell you about it you know it's it's really nice i like that i, I like this uh i i like this collection of stories and like i reread it like okay like every couple of years <laughs> I think that was, wasn't that on a list? I remember one of our colleagues, like, where Tabrisha and I work, I remember one of our colleagues was talking about it or mentioned it. It's been a it while. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I, I remember, yes. I, I found out about this book when I was still in college. Like, I borrowed it from our Japanese department. Mm. So, like, um, what's the title of it again? The Curious Casebook. of Inspector Hanshichi. Like, it usually pops up on Google once you find the words Curious Casebook. It sounds very familiar. Um, um, and maybe there was, like, a K-drama iteration of it. Because it sounds like something I've heard about, but... There are definitely a lot of, like, K... Not K-dramas, or, like, or... or maybe K-dramas or C-dramas that have Inspector something in it. Yeah. But, like, I don't know if they're connected. Hell, I've heard of, like, this um, Chinese movie called Judge D, I think. And, like, that's uh, another... And I know that there's several um, series to it. So I'm just here, like... They're all over the place. But, yeah. I... This is, this is a book that, like, I just... enjoy a lot like I, I and it's it's just a collection of stories is what it is like uh and it gives it actually it's funny because it also has footnotes that let you know like what like a uh, context if there's like something like going on in the knob in that particular story so like it's to me like i learned a lot about that period like while reading this that's cool uh Anybody else? I created a very short list <laughs> just now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, Zom 100. Um, to be perfectly honest, I fell off on it. But, but really, I mean, I'm, I think we read it during the pandemic because uh, Tabish and I, was it you and me? Or was it? Yeah. We were on a... Um, a book selection a, a thing for work and we both read it and loved it because who can't relate to I would <laughs> to rather face a zombie apocalypse than go to your soul crushing job <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like to be fair, I didn't read it, but I did watch the uh, the anime on Netflix, and I loved it so much. It's I it's fantastic. I think I have like the first and second volume on like my bookshelf, and it's just it's silly because it's like it it's a horror comedy, so you are gonna get some silliness to it, but it's just like. It's about this kid. Oh, he's not a kid, but yeah, I was like, he's like twenty something. Yeah, yeah he's twenty something. Well, he's younger than me, so he's gonna be a fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> me at my job. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> but he's like this young guy who works at a black, a Japanese black company. The people are not yes. black. It's just another term for <laughs> that's what they call concepts is necessary. illegal. <laughs> A no, no, like, that's what they call like the over abusive companies like the ones that over that tend to overwork their workers yeah um and it was like his dream job until he realized he was working at a black company and they and so he just wakes up all of a sudden and there's a zombie apocalypse happening and the first line he says is That means I don't have to go to work. And the way I felt that so hard. <laughs> I felt that so hard. I mean, there's a lot of, like, this is a conversation for, like, season two or whatever. But I, like, having lost folks to COVID and the pandemic in general, like, and I still... thrived and I just related so hard and it came to I think it came at the perfect time being released while we were all kind of stuck at home and it just felt like re super relatable even with the 
the fa fantasticalness of a zombie apocalypse happening. But technically, it's like you were all zombies. Like the streets were empty, and like people were just shuffling around. So it was just it came into our lives at the right time, and it even though it was probably or probably was like published, you know, of well before the pandemic actually really started, it it's eerie how well it fit into this uh into like lockdown culture um and it's really funny <laughs> despite what some of our what some of our colleagues thought of it <laughs> but oh, they were huh. they weren't I, longer readers. i thought it was a hilarious take on the zombie uh genre yes. i agree i was like because when i was reading it with whitney i was like whitney it is this our <laughs> is, they, this, our is this our job <laughs> Is this song job. about us? Is this play about us? I know. <laughs> oh my god! Actually, to be fair, it I feel like it has a very similar take to Shaun of the Dead, where they're like, "All right, we'll pop. Uh, what was it? Uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, find blank. We'll flint. We'll find blank. Meet up with blank, and then and then we'll and, and we'll end up at the pub and we'll just Winchester, have ourselves yeah. a pint. <laughs> exactly, and like that's what I feel like. Zom One Hundred was was like basically like. Well, I want to do this, this, and that, and now nobody can stop me. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and I do have a couple more recommendations. The second one I have is called <laughs> Squad by Maggie Tokuda Hall. And it's basically about this squad of girls in high school who become werewolves. And that, and basically... They kill people. <laughs> Look, you you told me werewolves. There's a significant lack of werewolf representation. Oh, the... I love werewolves. Werewolves <laughs> over vampires every time. Always, except for Blade. Um... <laughs> the one werewolf movie I've seen is Ginger Snaps. Oh, that was oh, that's such a. It's so good. It's a cult classic. Because... It is a cult classic. Oh, Still yeah. haven't seen it. <laughs> it's so bad, but it's called Squad. It's so bad, it's good. <laughs> so Squad. And it's about these, uh, it's it's essentially a commentary on, like, the patriarchy and being a girl in today's, <laughs> being a young woman in today's society. And I, I think if you liked, um, obviously it's a different, a different type of horror genre, but if you liked um, Jennifer's body, essentially, you might like oh. this book. Um uh, we can always link it to in like the blog, but for y'all, I'll put it somewhere where you guys can kind of read the synopsis. That sounds cool. Um, and it's they they kind of essentially get away with it, right? Like they it's an insatiable hunger. It's like it's Jennifer's body meets the craft, kind of, but without the witchy or occult elements per se but it still has like that um weirdly like feminist lean and like girls who kill um so highly recommend um i think i read it for lambda um a couple years ago because there is some gay themes in it <laughs> or some queer bisexual themes in it um but i highly recommend it and if you also like um some like the technicolor it's not based in the 80s but like the color palette is very like oh, retro okay. um all right so i recommend it and it's a graphic novel so it's pretty it's a pretty quick read and then my other couple ones are crueler than dead which is another zombie um manga that came out in 2021 i think it was another book that we read for the book community that tabrisha and i were on um and it's basically this girl that becomes this the potential savior to the zombie apocalypse huh. uh, which is great and then a guest in the house which is kind of like a ghost story um and it's about this woman who marries this man with a daughter um who's and this man's wife before around the time before she entered their circle like the wife disappeared or died and so the wife 
is haunting their house, but we don't know if it's like in her head or if like the wife is actually haunting the house. And then she's uh potentially falling in love with the girl. <laughs> but it's still it has an it has a, an eerie vibe to it. It's not it's not romantic in any sense. I think okay. um Rebecca by yeah. Daphne Du Maurier. Yeah. That's how that's that's how it's 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 promoted as they're like oh it's like similar to Rebecca in a sense mm -hmm. yes and then lastly which I didn't get to put on here and then I'll toss it over is Stray Dogs by Tony Fleeks and to read you the person I can't remember the uh, Trish Forstner Forstner thank you yes. so this is it this is a a slasher slash slasher slash a uh, serial killer um graphic novel genre but through the through the pov of the pets because oh, it's of a, dogs yeah uh, the dogs because mm -hmm. i mean i don't it's i don't want to spoil it if you want to read yeah, it yeah you 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 kind of there, because it's, the story starts off with this new dog is entering in this house and there are other dogs there and you kind of get into the mystery aspect with why the other dogs are there how they came to be there and how yeah how they came to be there it is such an, an amazing thriller the artwork is amazing um it's like disney-esque Yes, or, like, yeah. all dogs go to heaven. If yes. You know oh, that. okay. They, like, yeah, that they is did, the artwork style. Yeah, and they did for the single issues of you, and you see them in the volume set. The single issue they did like a cover of um, like famous horror movies, and they put like um, for straight, for, and they just um, changed it over and put the title "Stray Dogs" issue number, um, whichever issue it is such a great um, gr um graphic novel there's stray dogs and then stray dogs dog days kind of like the aftermath yeah of what is revealed in the um in the first book so it now he's it, coming out with feral now i can't feral. wait to this deals with cats so this is gonna be <laughs> <laughs> of course to be would like it but <laughs> but yeah those are my recommendations um read them or don't but i think they're pretty great nice uh i would also like to mention dan da dan which has now gotten its netflix adaptation uh slash country roll adaptation nice great manga and the Before? animation by studio saru has been fantastic so far it's horror uh, it's supernatural because it deals well yeah. supernatural horror because oh, yeah. it deals with um <laughs> Well, it deals with aliens and also spirits. Okay. It's great. It's fantastic. That's um, how I know but... when an, a Netflix or a Crunchyroll adaptation is about because then I start seeing a lot of whole lists of <laughs> manga going out. I'm like, okay, the, the ad anime is out, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> no, I've been reading Dan the Dan since... Um... I think since like the first few chapters came out because of uh like uh was it Suesha? Uh I think so, yeah. Yeah, was, like the one of the publishers. Yeah, yeah, the Shonen like website. Um but yeah, no, it's been fantastic. And what I do actually appreciate about it is that the plot moves forward. <laughs> <laughs> because underneath it all is also a romantic comedy. It's it so funny. blends together so many genres, it's amazing. Um, so without carrying on too much about it, uh, is there anything else left to talk about? I know, did anybody else want to mention any other books? I think we got that covered, right? I think we might have, actually. Okay, I cool. feel like, yeah, we came, like, a full range. Well, I mean, we could talk about more, but we, we could be here. We could always Good. talk about more. I think yeah. we're running short on time, so... And there's no real time limit other than the ones we've placed <laughs> ourselves. But... No. What is time? <laughs> there's is no time? real limit. Um, but let's just to move it on. I mean, has anybody been to the Halloween parade? No. No. 
So, yes. So I went with a former friend, like, a f obviously pre-pandemic. Um, and we actually kind of, it was my first time kind of jumping the guard and kind of walking down the street. And it was actually, um, it was a great experience. That was like the first time I went. What were you dressed as? Evelyn, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just just I never I never really dress up for Halloween Halloween is not if I'm being perfectly honest and I'll get su super quick tangent I don't really celebrate Halloween like that like costumes and like going out it's not really my thing now it's like a birthday Christmas Cinco, maybe Cinco de Mayo I am <laughs> yeah just to get your tequila shots right Exactly. You eat tacos but... and drink margaritas. That's what Cinco de Mayo I is. Love a, I love a <laughs> margarita. Hell, I'll, even 4th of July. But like Halloween, it's just... I I like going out. I like... See, it's like cosplay when you like go to conventions. I love seeing other people in costumes. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. But I don't have the time or the talent necessarily to put any real effort in even though last year I didn't win I won best scary costume because I dressed up as a k-pop company delivering bad news that's <laughs> oh that's so and funny. everyone stopped and so many people liked it I was just like good choice but back to my original uh point here is like I went last year and it was just not a great time because I think it was like the first time not since the pandemic but maybe actually maybe since the pandemic but it was just you couldn't move you couldn't go anywhere you couldn't like wow. really enjoy you couldn't see anything it was just it was worse than pride and I was just like this is too this is too much and of course when when they do the parade route you can't easily just like cross Please. the street or yeah. like go anywhere and like it was it was just not a good time so I never really have to do that again <laughs> you can only do that kind of thing when you're young honestly yeah. Yeah. like do it in your early 20s mid 20s after a certain point you're like no I am not dealing with that that's you, the last time I was there like ages ago yeah the last and, time I was there was when I was like in my teens and I climbed the street light just to get a good view of the yes. uh, of the parade yeah yeah you're climbing something you're going over your yeah you're like spider-manning everything yeah that yeah. was that was that was, I'm like I have not fun. been yeah I haven't been back since and I'm like I don't I kind of want to but also I feel I do feel like I'm too old to go now. It's, and it's not even like I forgot an age thing necessarily. Like you're as young as you feel, but it's, look, man, my back it's an age thing. <laughs> it's an age I mean, thing. It's I don't know how it's an age thing. Yeah. But it's uh, <laughs> but it's like the world has changed mm. in a such a huge way. We lost two years of our life and there's just been this desperation to like get back to pre-pandemic but we're never going to be back to pre-pandemic oh, oh, like never. the world has changed like covid it like there's a covid season now it's like you can order te you can start ordering covid tests again at through for free through the post office i got mine <laughs> i also Same. got mine Oh, yes. I need to order my shit. <laughs> order it. Order and it. it's just like the world has changed and we can't go we we can't go mm. back. Like large crowds shouldn't be a thing. Like Teresa and I were going to Comic Con this week, but it's So am I. I'm going right. To... And it's just like Wait, I'm the only one not going. I'll bring you back. That's something. wild. I love a bitch. Aww. Bring you Can back. Can you get so him in? Can you get him in? <laughs> no. Can it work your magic? No, not with not Comic Con. this time around. No, Comic Con Aww. is so strict with their they shit. They're very. They have. And we, do, and we do have two badges, but yeah, not this No, time. no, no, no. <laughs> because they were like, um, they told a co worker of mine because she's a panelist. So she can get a refund for her pro badge was four day. They told her you have to take a picture that you tore up, you cut up your pro badge. 
<laughs> and send it to us, and then we will refund your money. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So no, well, they they're they very famously very strict. Yeah. yeah, they're very very Warmer. strict. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But I'll bring you back something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Those types of things are just... I'll get you a sticker. Yeah. It, but those well, types I, of things are super spreader events. And I'm going because I have to go. I'm staying but, last. Like, I, but, uh, I learned my I, lesson. Oh, that's yeah. right. You I got you COVID asked, from Evelyn? anime. And I did not. Not at Anime NYC. That was my fault. I should have. And I will for Comic-Con. Yeah, I've, I've found that, like, between Chris and I, like masking at big events like you know because we've been to at least two concerts this year we've been to nycc and like other things and like i've been, i went to nycc last year and stayed masked and i didn't feel sick i didn't even get like any bit, bit of con flu even i was anticipating it but i i was like all right nothing happened well like, you get con flu for going three days in a row yeah. okay that's fair that's true yeah, but like I was paranoid. I was still paranoid. No, and yeah, because yeah. people don't want to do Admit the right it. thing and stay home and like, I, mm -hmm. and in, in a way, like you understand it because they just spent all of this money, and if they didn't get the insurance for it, it I don't even know if you can. Even if you did get insurance, I don't know if you could get a refund. But like, no, if anything, you maybe get percentage back. But yeah, yeah, but not a full refund. Yeah, yeah. I got my COVID booster like uh, last, last week. week. So... I got mine a couple of weeks ago too. I should actually go get mine. I'm due. We'll get I'm due. Yeah. I'm so lazy. <laughs> it's right there. You can walk in. I know. <laughs> well, now they closed the Rite Aid by my house. And... Wait, seriously. Boom. Yeah, so now, like, I have to up. find a new pharmacy. I have to find a new yeah. Thing. I'm like, Jesus. Christ. Oh, you have to See, time that right too. Well, it, it makes you feel like crap, doesn't it? Yeah. Like usually, like well, your arm will hurt, but then you also might get like a little bit depend better depending on it, like I yeah. I yeah, the reaction. I was fine. Uh, I no, Tessa died. <laughs> well, well, that's it, what I'm gonna doesn't... do. It wasn't very bad. Like it like here's the thing. Um last year I took the shot like covid plus a flu shot together because they said you could do that. Oh, you and were I laid was, out. I was laid out for 2 days. So this year I knew not to do that. Mm -hmm. So I just had my covid shot and then like um I came home and I was fineish like and then the following day I've, I felt like I felt a little bit of chills and I rested and the following day I was pretty good. So, like, I, it was not very bad at all. Like, I felt uh -huh. fatigued at the most, but, like, a, a day of rest and I was fine. Yeah. And I, I wasn't even, like, I didn't even, like, stop work or, or anything. Like, I just, I, I, I did my Monday stuff. I laid down afterwards. I rested. And Tuesday, I was fine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're at time. I think, I think we're at time. So, with that, um, not sure when this episode will actually air, but real quick, don't forget to vote. <laughs> For the love of God. Um, and thank you for listening to Fake Book Club. You can listen to us on Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, and SoundCloud. You can visit our website at fakebookclubpodcast.wordpress.com. And our next episode and season finale will be hosted by Tabrizia, where we'll be talking about the battle of the reading trackers, Goodreads versus Storygraph. Um, yeah. Awesome. Good <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yes, happy, happy, happy Halloween, Halloween everyone. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Bye.